Excellent, excellent. Thank you for that introduction, Shalab. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions directly to the panelists before I open it up to the audience. Um, <coughs> Uh, so, uh, I'm going to direct the first question uh, to the Africa Enterprise Challenge Fund, Bolek. Um, one of the things you mentioned is that you do these competitive grants, but then you, uh, you uh, two things. One, you offer some organizations grants and some returnable capital, and how do you make that distinction? And second, how are you sort of a feeder platform for, for uh, future impact investors and equity funds? Uh, sure. So, um, indeed, we, we have two, uh, our funding is, is comprised of uh, two components, typically. There is a grant component and uh, there is a uh, repayable grant or a soft loan, however you wish to refer to it, which is effectively a zero interest loan. Um, how we split that, it's, it's, it's a function of a number of things. Uh, we're obviously funded by donors. Some donors don't want to do loans at all because many donor agencies cannot handle returnable capital. They cannot actually receive capital from the uh, grantees or their clients. Um, so, so that's the that's the systemic sort of inbuilt uh, restriction that we have. But, but um, in some cases, when we actually get to decide. Uh, which which part is going to be? I mean, which part of the investment is going to be financed by a grant, and which part of the investment is going to be uh, financed by a soft loan? Usually, uh, the way it works, we have an investment committee which is independent of AECF. Um, the way it works and the way it gets decided is that the grant component is typically used to finance the more risky part of the project. For example, training, capacity building of the end beneficiaries. The loan component would be uh, used to, to finance, uh, say, purchase of equipment, for example. So that's 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 uh, that's the way we uh, split it. Uh, we also take into consideration local constraints and local uh, the, the environment in which the company works. Um, some economies are tougher than others in Africa. Uh, for example, we, we have a window, our competitions are referred to as windows. Um, so we have a window in South Sudan. In that particular competition, we don't have any loan component at all. It's one of the tougher markets in Africa. Um, so so this, is, this is how this split comes about. And uh, your second question was, uh, well, maybe just building on that, yeah. why um, do you think that um, an organization can handle, what assessment do you use to determine if an organization can handle a returnable capital? Um, what stage of growth perhaps are they at? Well, yeah, so, so we've, got, we've got more than 200 investments now. Uh, we do have uh, quite a few startup companies in our portfolio, um, especially in the renewable energy space. Those companies um, alone, in, in, in that particular case, is going to be uh, potentially going to be a hindrance for those companies to develop because obviously it is going to appear on their balance sheet. So we tend to be a little more cautious with that uh, when, when it comes to uh, actually awarding a, a loan to, to, to start a company. So that's, uh, that's another consideration. Um, and uh, the, sorry. The, so we, yeah, basically how do you determine which organization takes, can, can handle the brand versus the return? Yeah, so, 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 uh, so our assessment is that startup companies uh, are probably uh, better suited for, for, for a grant, uh, grant, grant funding. And then when they have established some early results, then it, they can... Yes, and we encourage and, and we are very much uh, intent on, on uh, the companies that we found. Uh, we are very intent on uh, stimulating or encouraging uh, this business mindset in the companies. They need to understand that nothing comes for free and there is no such thing as free capital. So actually, one of our requirements is for each company to match our funding at a one-to-one -one ratio and that includes the loan component, in fact. Okay. Um, then we also have a unit within AECF, which is called AECF Connect, which connects the, uh, well, admittedly, the, the um, high-performing uh, performing companies 
with uh, impact investors, private equity funds. So we are very deliberate on, on doing that and making that connection happen. Uh, we stay with the companies typically for a period of six years. We don't disperse everything at once up front. Uh, the disbursements happen typically over a period of three to four years. And they are triggered by a number of factors and compliance with all the various conditions and requirements as they are spelled out in the funding agreement is one of them. So uh, the companies, they need to be audited uh, once a year. They need to submit their financial statements every six months to us. Um, so only that is really something that strengthens the company a lot. And if you imagine in the African context, that is quite something. Yeah. Uh, so, so just by strengthening the internal capacities of those companies, financial management is one of them. Uh, only that makes those companies so much more attractive for commercial investors. So you're really building the opportunity for com them to attract commercial investment. That's the long-term vision. That absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because one of the beliefs that that is underpinning ACF, the, 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 the logic of how we operate, is that we invest in for-profit businesses because we basically use the private sector as a tool uh, to achieve social impact. And uh, in order to, to be able to do that, it has to be sustainable. So the companies cannot rely on uh, soft loans or, or free capital. They need to be able to attract commercial funding. And, and uh, we are very deliberate about this. And as a famous British politician once said, the uh, problem with a certain ideology is that inevitably, at some point in time, you will run out of other people's money. She was a lady of the right, as you can imagine. <laughs> Thank you. So, 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 that's, so, so that's the logic. Mm -hmm. that, that we, we work in a space where private, uh, commercially oriented investors are not willing to work. They are very reluctant to work. But once the companies graduate from our program, they have to uh, be able to, to access uh, commercial funding. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Bolek. That was perfect. I'm going to switch to the opposite side. So. You heard Bolik say that they look at companies for five to six years and disperse over three to four years. How did ICRC do all this in 60 days? And uh, <laughs> what is sort of the ecosystem support in addition to funding? And can you talk a little bit about yeah, that? I think, yeah, we give very little in terms of funds. Um, you know, what, what we found, um, uh, well, I've been in this game for, you know, we're learning in a sense, but what we found is that there are many social entrepreneurs, wonderful ideas, wonderful products, but they're not connected with the users. So what we bring, and the heart of what we bring, is actually what is it that the users, in fact, need. And on that basis, and that's what drives the process of innovation. And in a sense, we set in, in chain a whole series of loops <coughs> that people have to go through to ensure that they get to the final product. So what we did provide was, A, the first selection of which of these things would actually be useful to the final users. <coughs> Secondly, mentorship. So people came with different experiences. And we found that um, um, one was that you know, we as an institution didn't really understand everything in the environment. So the heart of it was about collaboration. It was bringing uh, people like maker groups, people like the IIM. I people like the IITs together to kind of define the entire environment, the entire ecosystem that would make, to, to, to take a social entrepreneur through the process. Now those people were able to give direct inputs, mentorship, so mentorship online, mentorship face-to-face, -face, regular checks as they went through the 60 days, and we provided the kind of support that they needed, whatever it was. We just opened budgets. and people were able to use the budget for whatever they wanted. It was a kind of a loose budget. Um, we then, um, you know, I think a, a very, very other important thing is that we did a sort of an X factor exercise, where if you were not up to either in terms of prototyping or your business plan or the design, able to you know, go through these hoops, you were deselected, which gave a lot of impetus to the other people to go forward. Um, they were given other support um, um, and then um, uh, 
be finally selected on the basis of our needs, which were the ones that went <coughs> Now, it, it was extraordinary. It was absolutely extraordinary that somebody could go from an idea, and it wasn't even a proper diagram which they sent us, but just an idea of what they were trying to do through this process. And I can't tell you the answer. Maybe you should ask some of the the, 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 entrepreneurs, yeah. the entrepreneurs who, why and how, you know, this this happened. Mm -hmm. Now we haven't ended the game. Yeah, we, we're certainly <laughs> going to be consumers of this product. It's still going through a testing phase. Um, <clears throat> but we're also looking at, um, you know, getting funding <coughs> that, even though we might consume fifty thousand of these, um, you know, there's probably a market for three million or four million. So, you know, we need to apply to the fund sitting out here mm -hmm. to see how. You know, we can support either. We, we handhold, but we also allow people to obviously go to the challenge fund. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much for that, Arun. So I'm going to move to Shalab, and this is the point that we ended at, which is innovation on top of innovation, looking at different things. And so Shalab, what are you doing in your program for nine months with these entrepreneurs who need money and <laughs> many other things, but you're giving them nine months of training? <laughs> so please. Okay. Um, so I'm so glad, you know, that uh, Mr. Saxena talk, talked about, you know, creating partnerships. And that's precisely, you know, what we do. So we, um, right from bringing in students to our cohort and making a cohort, wherein the idea is to, of creating a community of social entrepreneurs. Because, you know, each one learns from the other. And that's that's the kind of an organic relationship that involves you know, there with us. Um, so we have our partners like PwC. And so, so PwC actually offers men mentoring senior partners and directors, they mentor the students who are with SSE. Okay, so that's that's the kind of a relationship that, that happens. We get uh, people best in the industry to deliver sessions on marketing, finance, different hard skills and soft skills that are required by the entrepreneur. So that's how you know this program is actually built around. But most importantly, um, as much as you know it is you know supply driven, I think most of the program is demand driven, we constantly take feedback from the constantly take feedback and we work, we keep reinventing the program in such high degree that we don't make the program as, as, a, as a, uh, a program has been designed and will be delivered. So I think mean, that's the beauty, one of the things that, that's about this program. Second thing is, it's, uh, as I mentioned, and I can't mention it, uh, stress it anymore, that it's, it's purely entrepreneur driven. Um, not so much enterprise because enterprise definitely happens. Yeah, uh, whether it is about scale up or it's about start, it's about, you know, you're, you're talking about an individual who needs to have that fire in the belly, who needs to have that gut, you know, to just go out and take the enterprise because it has to become his or her life mission. As much as, you know, we would, we would like to have cushy jobs in our chairs, you know, earning, you know, 50 lakhs a month, uh, 50 lakhs per month, 50 lakhs per annum, you know, people, people earn that, those kind of uh, salaries in the kind of organization that supports such um, uh, entrepreneurs, they want similar thing to happen to them. But they are taking a different path. And I think that's where, you know, you need a program which actually hand and supports them. I just want to make a quick point of my experience on Grand Challenges. If I can do that. Yes. Can take two minutes? Yes. Yeah. So this is not to, uh, you know, uh, uh, say that grand, I'm against Grand Challenges, no. Because that's what I recently had uh, my chat with Mr. Spilliger and Entrepreneurship where Justana was there. And uh, you know, uh, we basically came to this, and this was about a few years ago. And government of India had organized a challenge uh, to reduce tragedy. Okay, this was focused on women. Yeah, on uh, and uh, so in applications were invited, and uh, I think there were six awardees, and uh, they were given a cash prize, they were given a citation, and the prime minister felicitated them to <coughs> make the one, etc., etc. All the paraphernalia that goes with grand challenges and challenges so far, it happened, photo ops happened, everything happened, yeah. And I got very intrigued because at that time I was with the Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India in Ahmedabad, I was teaching there, I was, I was teaching social entrepreneurship actually. So I went to the government and I, uh, I had the access, so I, I said, I'm very, very, you know, enthused as to what you have done, now what, what's happened? I said, what do you mean, what happened? You know, we invited applications, we studied and we selected and we awarded, and now we have six innovators, you know, who've, who've done this. I said, very good, now what? So they said, what do you mean? I said, I want to know how are these innovations used, whether they're commercialized or not, whether there's a market for them, what happened to them? 
said, we don't know. We have no idea as to what has happened. I said, um, would you like to know? He said, yeah, but we don't have the way with all. Would you like to do? I said, yes. <coughs> Can you just share the addresses and their phone numbers and email IDs with me? They very graciously did that. And I, in my office, after my you know office hours, because I couldn't do it in my office hours, I started calling them up, you know, one after the other. First person, he says, I'm 63 year old and not very, doing very well, and I'm, I'm actually bedridden right now. And I've used the money to buy medicines. Cool. Second person I call up, and he says uh, that, you know, uh, I bought a laptop with the price money and I'm done. The third person I call up, and no offense, he was a professor from one of the IITs, and said that, you know, this was a, we participated and we had four students and myself, and we distributed the prize money among ourselves, and we know entrepreneurs. If you are from Entrepreneurship Women's Institute and any of your students want to commercialize it, you are welcome to come and take it. Yeah? Uh, goes bus. The fourth person never picked up the phone. Okay? Only two people picked up my phone and agreed to discuss their projects with me. I went to the director and said that, you know, I want to bring them to EDI and actually help them, and not really because I didn't have the way I didn't have funds to incubate them or, or mentor them to that extent. I brought them and uh, created a pool of faculty members who helped them with their idea of refining and business modeling and business planning. They created their business plan, they did their finance, and also introduced them to a couple of organizations which could actually help them you know, commercialize the innovation. Only one of them actually went off. The other person got a very good job and he went off. It just didn't work. And it was at that point of time only I really uh, you know, wanted to work and curate a program which can actually create entrepreneurs and focus on entrepreneurs. And that's why you know, School for Social Entrepreneurs. Because it really fills the need of and, and, and gives respect and dignity to that individual who's trying to champion and be an entrepreneur. And that, that's what is the link and the connect which needs to happen between challenges and funds and the entrepreneur and you need a catalyst, which is a, which is a learning program, which needs a, which is a hand holding program, which is mentoring, which is sounding board, which is someone. Just to summarize, so challenges are a strong component and I think of driving solutions to large development challenges. And it's interesting to see the different perspectives from the consumer side to looking at financial institutions and governments of um, what and Africa looking at how uh, a country with so many issues such as South Sudan would be different and need have different needs than enterprises that are coming from a more advanced country. And finally, looking at focusing on the entre entrepreneur. And I think it's a continuum. No one answer is the best or, but we hope this was a useful session for you to come out with and please use this opportunity to also meet with um, our panelists and uh, thank you very much for your attention.